I think over the last hundred years, uh, the PCA and the associated members have helped supply very vital building material in uh, in the industry for, uh, for construction in the U.S. You know, concrete has a very uh, dynamic properties and can be used in all kinds of applications. It's resilient, it's sustainable, um, it's energy efficient, so I think really we've contributed to the, the great growth of this nation. Imagine if you can any, any major city, if suddenly there wasn't any concrete, what would it be made of? You couldn't have it. You couldn't build anything tall. You couldn't make a road that would last longer than one or two seasons of, of rain and snow, whatever. You couldn't do it. Uh, PCA uh, really has been so much to so many people over the past hundred years. It is an organization that has helped its members to persevere, to overcome tough times, to continue to promote uh, what is really one of the greatest building materials known to mankind. Well, I think the biggest thing that the PCA has done over the years is has given us has given us a voice in Washington, something that uh, some years ago we didn't have. I look at the advocacy that PCA has accomplished. I look at where they've come from. I look at how they've moved the needle. I look at how PCA has become a real player, uh, both on Capitol Hill, as well as with the credibility of information flow to the regulatory agencies. And one thing that people don't realize with, with PCA, and of course we deal with that with them all the time, since I chair the committee of jurisdiction that, uh, that deals with these things, they're talk you're talking about homes, you're talking about roads, you're talking about uh, all the things that, that people, that really drive people and, and their interests. Now this isn't gonna happen if you have uh, one group saying one thing and another group saying another thing. Uh, you have to have professionals to do it. You guys have done a real good job. PCA has done a great job of unif unifying their message. I represent the largest cement producing district in the United States. Uh, so for me, you know, I, I want to make sure that we have policies here uh, that will allow for uh, and permit cement manufacturing and manufacturing more generally. It's better off to have the industry speaking as one voice here. Portland Cement Association has been that voice for so many decades, 100 years now, uh, and uh, it's helped foster the development of other organizations such as in the ready mix side. Well, I think any time uh, association can bring industry members together and get the strength that comes with numbers uh, is always a positive thing. I think we collectively, we should be stronger than we are individually. Well, PCA's uh, role has been vital to the industry over the years, uh, certainly uh, from an American Concrete Pavement Association perspective. Certainly, I think the cement industry is the glue that holds the entire industry together. So um, it's prevalent in, in every form of concrete, so it's an instrumental part of what makes concrete what it is. And so, you know, PCA's role in that process is they're the only industry group that spans across all of the different concrete segments. And so being able to pull the groups together um, and, and unify us when we have common issues, which we often usually do, um, that's the role of PCA to help provide that leadership to build that and build that unity. One of the things that we look to uh, as far as our mission in the industry is to be a resource to the customer, to the customer of the ready mix producer, to the customer of the paving contractor. And it's been through PCA and PCA's uh, cooperation that we've been able to do that.
The cement industry, probably more than any other, has worked to reduce its carbon footprint during the last 25 years. Well, the, the message is very coherent. It's very consistent. So we have a really good story to tell from our manufacturing process. We've made great strides in energy efficiency. We have great information to share about the energy that we do use and how we've reduced that, how much more efficient we've become. We are trying to reduce our environmental footprint here at Lafarge Wholesome by adding other things to the cement, other cementitious materials like limestone, like ground granulated blast furnace slag, those things that have cementitious properties and allow us to reduce our carbon footprint. Okay, so here at ASRock, uh, at our Nazareth facility, we have a couple different initiatives in terms of sustainability. One is really moving away from the fossil fuels. Uh, we are converting our plant to natural gas um, starting January 2016. And we also uh, are going to be burning alternative fuels, uh, which means we replace part of our raw materials with the ashes resulting from these fuels. Uh, so by moving away from coal or pet coal, uh, we're really improving our uh, greenhouse gas emissions and our overall CO2 uh, footprint. I think we're extremely sustainable material and our focus is trying to get people to focus on the, the larger picture, to understand that when you build something that will last for generations, for centuries, there's nothing more sustainable than that. And when you can do it with raw materials that are abundant everywhere on the earth, um, you know, that's something that really has never been duplicated since the times of the Romans. Well, I think just the nature of concrete uh, makes it a sustainable build, uh, building product because it lasts so long. I mean, we're talking about, uh, you know, an industry here that's been 150 years here and a lot of the products that we see are still in existence. In fact, today in the paper was a storyline on a product uh, uh, produced in uh, New Jersey and a, and a road that was uh, built in 1912. So, you know, we're not redoing construction buildings made out of concrete last for you know, for, for, for decades and into the hundred years, which is, you know, just a key part of the sustainability. In the uh, early 20th century, concrete was a relatively unknown commodity and um, it was through the, uh, the development of the technology of how to use concrete that it became um, a, sort of a staple to the construction industry worldwide. PCA has been key to uh, really making cement and concrete an integral part of our everyday lives. Without the PCA, we wouldn't have a lot of the seminal research that was done originally with, uh, with regard to uh, uh, strength and durability and how to design. The MIT is uh, definitely an effort by the industry to reduce its environmental footprint and become a more sustainable production process. The industry has made tremendous strides over the last few decades in energy efficiency and sustainability and uh, continues to invest in research. MIT, uh, Concrete Sustainability Hub, is one of those areas that we are continuing to invest in for the future of the industry. I think a lot of the work that's been done through the MIT Concrete Sustainability Hub has, has made a very big impact. I think that's laid a very good groundwork for the future. 
uh, coming from MIT, we we really have uh, valued the support that PCA is bringing, you know, not just from a monetary standpoint, but also in terms of the engagement that we get with the PCA members and also with those uh, other stakeholders like departments of transportation and uh, uh, builders. I think the need or the interest for resilient construction uh, is finally starting to uh, make sense to a lot of uh, owners and, and families. I think when you see things like natural disasters such as fire, earthquakes, hurricanes, tornadoes, I think it's starting to really make sense to people that they need uh, safe dwellings to live in. Concrete is all about longevity, durability, and resilience. That's the idea of using concrete, that once you build something, you don't have to rebuild it constantly. So when you do that, the value of concrete is not only on the day that you finish your structure. The value concrete delivers is over a long period of time. That's why you're using concrete in the first place. Um, I think there's a desire to build better uh, more quality buildings and structures in our country and we have the answer um, you know we we are touting and promoting resilience now no one else can do that and I think continuing on this process of of durability and of life cycle and how our products actually serve a good long purposeful use you know our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren are going to be able to enjoy the the fruits of our labor not only in what we've done, but physically in being able to see what we've built. PCA, above all, needs to maintain its standing as a center of knowledge and expertise. This is really what gives PCA its credibility in all the other areas that we, we serve. Uh, well, CTL Group and through its ownership, um, PCA, uh, I view them as a national asset. Uh, CTL Group, as a wholly owned subsidiary of PCA, has been instrumental from the very beginning in uh, developing uh, our understanding of ha the properties, the uh, durability, the um, uh, potential limits of, on the use of concrete. Looking back at the major accomplishments of PCA, it was really recognized early on by the industry that an industry association could be a very important part of, of coordinating, standardizing, and improving the customer experience for uh, the new product, Portland Cement. The industry has moved a number of standards forward, uh, really to help uh, the acceptance of our product in the marketplace and help us to achieve some environmental uh, initiatives. PCA is the place where you can go to get the knowledge and expertise that you don't have within your own walls. PCA is an organization that can do the kinds of things that you as a, as a cement producer, for example, either can't do or choose not to do. As a young engineer at 22, I remember attending a PCA uh, conference on chemistry and introduction to uh, introduction to the cement process. The education programs have been at the heart of things we've been involved with and, and participated in and I've always enjoyed getting to watch young employees in the industry brought into the fold and, and the opportunity for them but also the opportunity for continued enhancement. PCA is not going away. As long as there's an industry, as long as there's a need to have a center for knowledge and expertise, as long as there's a need for a forum for the exchange of ideas and information, as long as there's a need for a coordinating entity that can get all the aspects of the industry working together, and as long as there's a need for an organization that has the standing to stand up to the government regulations, to stand up to the legislator, to stand up to the 
market decider, somebody that has that standing, as long as those needs are there, there will be a PCA.